Hello and welcome to my series Learn Radiology with Dr. Anil Joshi. Today's topic is Radio Physics Simplified. Extensively covered Radio Physics lectures are available on my website or my YouTube channel. However, we have made it simplified especially for the technicians so that they can understand it and a large lecture is converted into the smaller pieces. So in this lecture we are going to see a rotating anode x-ray tube. So in x-ray tube when there is anode is rotating it is called rotating anode x-ray tube. It's a small topic and we are going to cover only on that. Initially a disclosure most of the material used here are from our own but some are we have taken from the net which is royalty free. We acknowledge with thanks from those whose material is available on the website or as the uh, net free of cost royalty free we thank. Now let's come to the physics. Today's topic is X-ray tube in more particular anode. So uh, X-ray tubes constitute see here rotating anode and stationary anode. But today's our topic is only on the rotating anode and on stationary anode a different lecture can be referred. What are the components of X-ray tube? It converts basically electricity energy into a radiation. How? That is by using the thermionic emission, then accelerating the electrons, then decelerating them and then producing them or converting them into the excess. Now in this process 90% of the incidental energy is converted into heat and only 1% of the incidental energy is converted into the excess. Now what is there inside the, uh, inside the glass insert? There is a filament similar to that of the light bulb which glows when heated or which glows when you apply electric energy that hits the filament and from that the electrons are emitted as a cloud or what we call as at the boiling of the electrons or electronic thermionic emission. Now whatever these electrons are coming out of the filament has to be accelerated and they have to hit a target. So this is a large usually tungsten block what you are seeing here. Now here we have illustrated as a filament and a target. Now the filament is called as a cathode. Now it's a coil of tungsten similar to that of the light as we have already discussed and is a source of electrons. How? Because of thermionic emission there is a boiling of electrons which comes out because of the heat. Electricity produces a heat and electrons are boiled out and they produce a electronic cloud which is accelerated. Now here you are seeing inside a tube what is there. Now let us concentrate on anode only. Now there are two types of uh, anodes. One thing is called rotating type and second is called a stationary type. As the name indicate they are either stationary or rotating. Now today this lecture is on rotating anode. So we will be concentrating on rotating anode only. Now this is a tube. Now you see carefully what the tube has got. It has got a outermost. This is made up of the steel and inside there is a oil. Now this is a glass tube head. Inside you are seeing here a anode, a cathode and remaining things you will be seeing as the lecture advances or in the some other lecture. When we started developing higher and higher capacity of the X-ray generators, we started needing a large amount of power. This was uh, producing a large amount of heat and we started needing something which will dissipate this heat properly give us longer exposures, give us successive exposures. Now designing factor in output of the X-ray was a designing of tube which we ju just now discussed and in that the most important was the unit which gets heated was the anode. Now anode of a rotating anode tube consists of a large disc of tungsten or an alloy of tungsten which rotates at the speed of our 3600 revolutions per minute when the exposure is being made. So what does it make is the because the anode is rotating every time whichever X-rays are getting produced or whichever electrons are accelerated and hitting the anode will be hitting a different surface and since they are hitting a different surface the heat dissipation will be faster and large exposures are possible. Now this the speed why they are at high speed because at a, a different time a different surface of the anode will come in contact different a focal spot will be at a different place and that will prevent heat dissipation as well as erosion of the anode. Now if we really calculate the speed of 3600 rpm per minute then the electron stream only once every 1 upon 60 second and the remainder of the heat generator during the exposure can be dissipated. So what happens is every 1 upon 160 second the heat that is produced will be remain at that spot and at another next second fraction of second there will be a different focal spot or there will be a different surface of the anode that will be exposed. Now let us see a cross section and diagram. Now you are seeing here a stator of induction coil then rotor of the induction motor which rotates it at a speed of 
1600 rotations per minute rpm the rotations per minute now here see this is a anode now this is the surface which is exposed this is getting rotated inside with a speed of 3600 rpm from here the electrons are produced and accelerated and they are hitting here the surface now each and every time there will be a different surface and each surface will get 1 upon 60 seconds that is a fraction of second and all these things are embedded inside a glass envelope now each and every aspect of this we are going to see in a different short videos as well as on a long lectures now here we are seeing a stator rotor then glass envelope then anode now that that was station the tube which was earlier seen is now here bombarded by the electron and the x ray beam is coming out as you are seeing the x ray beam is coming only out from a short aperture here and anode where the electrons are bombarded is called as a focus spot this is a focusing cup of which we are going to follow. see the uh, principle how it work in different video there are different videos made for filament there are different videos made for focusing cup and electron stream how it is governed and how it is streamlined now tungsten target is a form of uh, bevent disc now if you see bevent is there is a something like a shape and it rotates so different areas are getting exposed now widening of the focal spot is by amount of corresponding to the circumference of the bevent disc so circumference is also important and therefore heat will be distributed over the extended area now these are the tubes we are seeing because it is moving every time there is different surface a focal spot is called as focal track in a rotating anode machine so it can be, it can accept a tube current of 100 to 500 ma for 10 to 50 times of the stationary anode that is because of the higher capacity than 3000 revolutions per minute or 3600 in a latest machines this cannot be used for the dental purpose for the reason its size is large and the application is where you need more successive exposures or longer exposures like in departmental radiography dental tube can have a small anode that is the fixed anode that we are going to see in some other lecture in some unit it has to be a rotating anode tube like in ct scan like in mammography machines or like a machines which are used for the angiography this has to be with a rotating anode now advantage of rotating anode tube already we have seen now let us club them together higher this higher heat dissipation is possible due to larger surface area made possible due to use of tungsten for its manufacturing it has got high dissipation capacity it has got high melting point so it is a very ideal material for the anode now due to the rotation there will be every time different surface and this will further facilitate the heat dissipation and also the wear and tear of the anode will be less since every time different surface what we have seen is 1 upon 60 seconds there is a change in the focal spot that's why its wear and tear will be less and heat dissipation will be more but at the same time it has got a bulky that's why it cannot be used in a dental unit it has got disadvantages what we were seeing just now let us enumerate more it is a more complex unit more complex more moving parts more is a maintenance then is the rotor drive circularity then is a motor winding in the housing these things are there which makes it a bulky and also it has got a more maintenance than bearing in the insert bearing in the insert is to have a smooth working of the high resolution now with this we are coming to end of the lecture today we have seen only a small part and more detail and other parts are dis uh, discussed in some other videos i thank you for giving me your valuable time i request you to visit my website for the comprehensive and detailed lectures over this topic and many other topics thank you take care all the best good luck